So to know about what is gravitation, we need to go back in time to the Newton's age because Newton was the first scientist, physicist, mathematician, philosopher who actually shown the experimental approach to sciences. He wrote a famous book called Principia. Principia. And in that book, he mentioned so many things which we discussed, going to discuss in the chapter called Mechanics. So this is also a part of discussion in Mechanics from this book. Newton is famous for two things. One is loss of motion and second is law of gravitation. He explained that the gravitational force between two massive bodies, massive bodies means which have masses, is attractive. The gravitational force is always attractive. Between two massive bodies means See, you have taken M1, M2, two point masses, but it is not always correct. Sometimes you can take a big masses like this, a big spheres, a big spheres. Still, this diagram is correct because what Isaac Newton mentioned that how big the body you take, but the total mass always concentrated at a point in the body and that point is called center of mass. So, what type of body you take, what shape body you take, how much weight body you take, the whole mass is concentrated at a point which is called center of mass. From center of mass of the body to the center of mass to the other body we are considering. So, two point masses M1, M2 which are having separation of R, R is the distance between the M1, M2 or separation of M1 and M2. Then Isaac Newton mentioned that the force acting between them. F is the force of gravitation between two massive bodies M1 and M2. And according to Newton, this force is directly proportional to product of masses M1 and M2. And this force is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. And this is also called inverse square law. inverse square law. So, what it means? What Isaac Newton was expressing that if masses increase their magnitude, then the force between them is also increases. If masses decrease their magnitudes, decrease the values, force also decreases. That is called directly proportional. Inversely proportional. If distance between the two masses increases, force decreases. If distance between two masses decreases, force increases. This is what called inverse square law. Now, if you take these two laws and combine together according to mathematics, F is proportional to M1 M2 by R square. And to remove the proportionality, we keep a constant and this constant is capital G. You can keep any symbol, but there is a significance for this constant. That is why we are taking only this symbol capital G. Capital G M1 M2 by R square. So, this is what called Newton's law of gravitation and this force is called gravitational force F equal to G M1 M2 by R square. And the question is what is G? Yes, the G is called universal gravitational constant, universal gravitational constant and it is even constant means it's a constant number and number is 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 and G has a unit it has unit to before going to this unit you should know what is unit of force all always we know the unit of force is Newtons unit of mass is kg unit of distance is meters so therefore if you want unit of G, take M1 M2 by R square to the left hand side. So, it become F into R square by M1 M2, right. So, therefore, the unit is Newton R square which is meter square 
by m1 m2 which is kg square universal gravitation constant constant but you should ask a question why g is called universal gravitational constant why it is called just a gravitational constant here is the importance of this law isaac newton's de you derived this formula for the bodies on the earth but the surpassing thing is that this formula can be applicable to any two massive bodies in the universe wherever you go in the universe you can apply this formula so that is what the interesting thing about this formula as it is applicable universally that's why this formula is also called universe law of gravitation now the question how isaacson has got this number 6.67 into 10 to the power of minus 11 newton meter square per kg square no one knows in old historic historical books also it was mentioned that isaac newton has isaac newton wrote this number like that there was no experiment there was no mathematical proof but how did you know this number is correct how can we agree if there is there was no mathematical proof later in modern century the scientists were did experiment to check whether g value is right or wrong and the most surprising thing is that experimentally it is correct even the isaac newton didn't do an experiment wrote the number as it is in the principia book but later in the experiment were proved that the same number so that's why isaac newton was uh, very famous and he is called father of classical physics now come back to the concept f equal g m1 m2 by r square and as you know that the si unit of force is newton now this is for any two massive bodies now apply this formula specially for earth and the mass on the surface of the earth if you see this diagram there is an earth having mass capital m there is a body of small m on the surface of the earth and the distance between the center of the earth to the mass on the surface of the earth is capital r which is which is a radius of the earth now what is the formula for force of gravitation on the mass m same formula transform there so f equals to g m1 m2 so first mass is small m second mass is capital m by r square is nothing but radius r square so this is the formula for force of gravitation on the of the body on the surface of the earth if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus